Hi, Gizmo here. Hey, Gizmo here. Welcome to my next adventure. I'm out camping with Jason. It's literally just got noisy with the bugs because the sun's just gone down. Now all the frogs and whatever it is making a noise has come out and making a noise. Uh, this is our next adventure. Just hiking out in the bush. Woohoo! <laughs> So let's get on with the video. Here we go. We're off on our next bush camp. Woohoo! So what's this video about? Well, nothing really. Just me and Jace going on a camp. Just wanted to get out for the weekend. And while we're out, might as well get the camera out and film it. We've got an extended long weekend break and it's Australia Day tomorrow. So we're going to make the most of our Australia Day and enjoy it. And it doesn't matter where you come from, what part of the world, if you're here in Australia and you live in Australia, uh, we celebrate Australia Day. And all it is is just celebrating the fact that we uh, live in this great country and we're glad enough to enjoy this sort of thing. So we went out um, to a park, did a bit of a sausage sizzle at the weekend once and a uh, big fat kookaburra came down and stole the snag out of my wife's roll. Just Bugger. came down, flew, pinched it and flew off. And then we went out the following day for another sausage sizzle in a different park. The same thing happened again. <laughs> pinched the sausage a second time. Not a bad little spot this. A little bit overgrown. You wanna sing a song? Sing a song. Ooh ah Ooh ah Ooh ah There you go. Ooh ah Ooh ah Ooh ah Ooh ah
I'm not even moving when I touch him. Good? Hey? Good? Awesome. Cool. That's what it's all about, mate. Yep. There we go, already. All the sun's out now. Good. Now we can start to relax and enjoy our camp. Here's a new addition to the Gizmo's uh, bush bag. It's the Catadine B3 water filter and I got this for a Christmas present so I'm pretty happy with that and they're supposed to be pretty good because um, the bags really mushy for squeezing water out of now you've seen me use my soya squeeze all the time I have to use a plastic soft drink bottle and they're hard to squeeze the water out of whereas this should be real easy the other thing is the filter is actually just in the cap that's the filter there so you can put dirty water in it and just still drink straight out of it through the cap you don't actually have to filter it into another container. You just drink straight out of this. Um, yeah, or I could squeeze the clean water into another bottle if I wanted to. It looks pretty soft and flimsy, but apparently they're pretty tough, so uh, only time will tell. And this is the one litre one. I chose the one litre one because it's not too big and easy to carry. Well, we'll see how this goes. tastes a bit filtery. Um, I guess it needs a few rinses out before I um, before you get that filtery taste out of it. The Catadine B3. I'm uh, getting a bit peckish now. I want something to eat, and uh, yeah, we've set we've set up camp over there, so. Um, Jason's having a cup of coffee. I'm going to make myself some uh, chicken and corn soup. It's not dinner time yet, and the rain's starting to come down, so we'll just shelter under this um, cabin for a while. Nothing like the fresh smell of gas. Let's hold my breath. <clears throat> one day I'll um, upgrade and get myself a better one than this uh, than the Chinese one. It does the job, but it's a logo. It's, um, works, it's light. MSR, you know where you are. Right. All that nice weather we've had recently. Yeah. <laughs> if 
come out to the overgrown jungle of the campsite in the rain. Could be worse. We've never been out in the rain anyway, so we'll give it a go. <laughs> So what have you got this time mate? I hope you haven't got big and chunky. <laughs> mate, I haven't got big and chunky. I left that department to be muscles. <clears throat> I'll show you what I got. Should I put a shirt on for the camera? Is the camera going? There's a skull on but you're not in it. <laughs> I don't know, it depends, depends on whether you're modest or not. I don't care. Is yours black country as well? Yeah, I so. Yours is a new model. I've had mine for a while. Oh yeah, beef teriyaki, I saw that one. They've got new packaging now, but yours, your packaging. Don't know why. I've never ever had beef teriyaki. I don't even know what it is. Oh, I've got a little tin of tuna as well. Munch, munch. And for my niece, it's actually gluten free, so she could eat it. What have you got? Tuna. Tin of uh, lemon and cracked pepper. Oh, I had one of them in my hand. I put it back. Oh, they're pretty nice. Yeah. Good bit of protein. There's my two knife. Flame on. No heat shield. does a good job of reflecting the sea and it just keeps the heat in. <laughs> I'm filming you, you're filming me. <laughs> right. Come back to you later. Looks good mate. Little heat shield. Yeah. It's a indispensable uh, item for this little stove. Yeah. Stops the wind and the flux that keeps the I'll heat. I have to invest in one of those. I think I paid about twenty dollars for it off eBay. So you can't get them in the shop. What is it? Steel or aluminium? Uh, Looks like steel. Stainless steel. If any of you are familiar with these um, wire cable saws. Um, the idea of them is to wrap them around a log and pull them backwards and forwards like that and they cut through a log. The problem with doing that is they break really easy and I guess it's because it's like bending a piece of wire backwards and forwards, they just get um, friction and they break. So if you can find yourself a green stick that you can bend into a bow shape, you can put your bow saw on the green stick like that. Now what I've done, I've added a spring on one end of it just to put a bit of tension on it as well so it puts tension on the bow and you can saw with it now like a bow saw rather than a cable saw so the idea now is not to bend it around its angle too much I can use it straight like that 
And it should last a bit longer doing it that way. So there you go, that's a little tip for your cable saw, is turn it into a bow. And uh, you might want to get a little bit thicker stick than this, I just did this for a demo. It works, but under a bit more tension might be nice. But uh, the spring on it works really good to put it under tension. I just notched out the end for the ring. Both ends for the ring to hold on there. Bit up the cold table. No. Do a little salt. But one of the better tasting ones. Do not have the full breakfast. Right, I'm going to eat this and get back to you later. So, beef teriyaki is pretty ordinary. Is it? I don't think there's a lot of flavour in them. <clears throat> it's not too bad, really, considering what it is. How much do you pay for yours? I don't know, it's been in the cupboard for over a year. <laughs> Spoon is useless. Well, the sun is just about on the horizon now, ready to go down. We're just having our dinner before it gets dark. And um, it's been a bit damp outside, a few rain showers, so I decided to start up the old campfire tonight. Seeing mm -hmm. as I didn't bring a jumper, um, looks like it's going to be a cold night, so a bit of warmth by the campfire will be good. Yeah, looking forward to a fire. That's a perfect way to end the night. I'm just going to talk a little bit about starting a campfire and why you see a lot of survival people using some sort of specialised tinder to start a campfire. And they do that for a reason. Because starting a campfire in any weather other than pristine conditions where everything is dry is a bit difficult. And the reason why is that, for instance, you try and light the fire with a match, the match doesn't burn for very long, and the stuff that you're trying to light with it won't burn very long. So the idea of using a tinder is that you have a flame for a whole lot longer. And I'll show you the different types of tinder that I'm going to use to start this fire. I've got some tea candles which are here and the little fire starter. Both of those things just make that flame last that bit longer so if your tinder is a bit moist it's got a chance to dry it out, whereas a match is not going to dry it out. I'd have to go through that whole box of matches 
just to dry out my tinder before it fire started. So there's lots of things for starting a fire, like a tea candle. You can use those because they burn for quite a while or two. And what's good about tea candles, these little aluminium trays that they're in, once they're in the campfire, they just burn up and disappear. Um, cigarette lighter. You'll find if you try and light a fire with a cigarette lighter, that starts burning your thumb after a while, so they're not very good for keeping the flame going. Matches. This is a um, just a redhead's fire lighter. You know, one of those barbecue fire lighters starting your fire in your home, starting your um, wood fire at home. Um, this is a mag. This is a magnesium block. And you scrape off little magnesium filings. It has a ferrocium fire steel inside of it. And uh, magnesium burns at a really, really high temperature, something like 2,000 degrees. And um, it dries out tinder really quick, but you've got to get an awful lot of these scrapings off to get that to work. Um, it doesn't burn just by holding a candle of flame underneath it. That's my thing. It, it doesn't actually catch on fire that way, but the little tiny scrapings do. Uh, it's a safe thing to have. Um, what else? Well, here's another thing that you could use in a pinch if you needed to start a fire, is your actual cord of paracord. Once you get that started, that flame just keeps going. So if you needed a flame for a, a length of time, piece of paracord might get your fire going quicker than a match or better than a matchstick yeah and you might you'll see me here using um, a cotton bud soaked in Vaseline so there's lots of different things for starting fires there's also one called wet tinder which I have some it's, it's similar to this stuff and it's really really good for starting fires in the wet There's stuff called waxwood. There's a million things you can get. So, all better than a box of matches. Put it that way. I've even been told that you can use some hand sanitizer to um, start a fire because the ingredients is flammable. And I tried it, doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard that as well. Yeah. Well, I tried it, it didn't work. <laughs> well, don't, don't rely on that one. I do the uh, Vaseline and cotton wool buds. Yeah, that works really good. Yeah, that yep. never fails. Yep. So I have this um, little Bear Grylls fire steel, and it has a scraper built into it. It's only a very short fire steel, but in a pinch it's all right. What's good about it is it's got the fire tinder inside the cap, and I have some cotton-filled... Vaseline soaked cotton balls in there and some little match heads just a whole bunch of little match heads So if you start that they all burn at once Capture that bit of a sunset. It's really the nice. cap didn't come with the lanyard attached so I had to drill a hole in it So that when they pulled the two sections apart I didn't lose it. It's a silly design so I fixed that Oh.